Okay, so the sample module. Um, so the idea behind this module uh, is built in the same way as the other modules uh, in that it's a B patcher so it can be loaded up into any max patch um, and have a nice clean interface that we can use so we don't have to dig through everything in max. Um, we can just load it up as a module. It's standardized size, standardized look in the same way that you might expect with say like the DOFA systems in Eurorack. Um, and it's very much here as a sound source or as a way of feeding audio into our patch. And rather than generating audio itself, it's using either pre-recorded audio or live audio input. And when I say live audio input, I'm talking about a microphone like this one, an SM57 or an SM58, or your laptop microphone, uh, which is quite interesting. If you use your laptop microphone, you can then start thinking about your laptop as a drum and then as an instrument, and you can hit it and create your own kind of rhythmic input. Uh, but I also have the ability to bring audio from around to the patch uh, back into uh, the sample so I can feed the patch back onto itself uh, which is quite interesting and because we're using buffers and we're playing things back at random we're mitigating feedback and that is worth noting if you are using if you are looking at the wider patch just be careful it shouldn't feed back um, but just be careful just be aware um, that that may happen um, fingers crossed it won't but anyway how is this patch working so the idea is as i said we're using audio rather than a generation so pre-existing or live input but we're not generating that sound we're using a sample it's a whole sampling workflow so as you can see here on the left uh, we have a playlist and we're able to load up 10 different audio recordings within this playlist. Uh, so I've got a mixture of different um, sounds in here. Some I've recorded, some I acquired for different projects, some I acquired for specifically this project. Uh, but there's stuff like, you know, me re doing my dishes in my kitchen or rainforest sounds. So the sound of a thunderstorm with birds and that sort of thing. Um, we have meadows, city ambiences, um, quiet library spaces, that sort of thing. And even a beat at the top. And the idea is to bring as many different kinds of sounds in here and use them to create textual variation. But basically what it's doing, we load those 10 audio recordings in here and then it's going to randomly switch between those recordings every two minutes. And when it switches between those recordings, it records it into a buffer, a 20 second buffer along with our live input. So it's layering the live inputs on top of our playlist recordings. And we have gain management controls here. So we have playlist gain and live input gain and output gain as well. And all of those are used to mitigate feedback and stuff like that as well. So two seconds, unlock the patch, open up the B patcher and expand it. Um, so yeah, the way this is working, as I said, it's recording into this buffer, this 20 second buffer, and then it's setting an in and an out point, which is what this yellow box visualizes here. This yellow box represents our in and our out point, and only audio that is within this yellow box is going to be played. We're selecting the samples using these sub patches here, and a sub patcher within a sub patcher and there's just a little bit of maths going on it's quite basic uh, a little bit of scaling a little bit of dividing and multiplication just to kind of get a number that is within our boundaries and this is all based on samples rather than milliseconds or beats per minute or anything like that but essentially we take this information we take this data it outputs we get our in and out box here and then we use a number random number generator here to set our playback speed and direction which is in this sub patcher so looking at the random number generation this is actually quite interesting so rather than using max's built-in random number generation i decided to base this around core modular concepts and use a noise generator and a sample and hold object based on the output of a phaser, so based on a sawtooth wave, to create a number between negative one and plus one, so a float number between negative one and positive one, scaled to zero and one, so we're normalizing it to zero and one. And that is what we use to then feed a signal here, signal generator here, 
which is controlling the groove object here. So this is basically dictating if this is a negative number, it's going to be playing backwards and the higher the negative number. So negative one is reverse at real time. And then anything lower than one, so say negative 0.5, uh, it's technically higher than negative one, but negative 0 0.5 will be slower and anything above that or lower than that negative two, for instance, will be fast and chip monkey. And if it's a positive number, say one, that's forwards in real time. 0 0.5 is forwards at half speed, 2 is forwards at double speed. We're also using it for some form and shifting stuff, so that's just creating some really interesting variation, particularly if we have any sound of human voice coming in from our live microphone, which we will hear in a second. So that's essentially how that patch works. So let's go back into the patch and actually hear what it sounds like. So if I open this up and we turn audio on, we see that it started to record into the buffer and it's recording my voice here so we can see some of that data, but it's also recording this field recording here. So if I bring the gain up, we are currently on an empty position, but we will start hearing what that's doing started to record into the buffer and it's